Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Coach Johnson's YouTube channel where we talk about the power rate, air rate, offensive philosophy, offensive concepts, and just the game of football in general, and especially when it comes to coaching. So very excited today is we're going to start breaking down our offensive run package and concepts that we use in the power rate. So I want to preface that uh, we do not have end zone film, so it's going to be tough to see in certain, certain film cut-ups, um, but I'm going to make sure that we're talking about the install. I'm talking about how we do things, what we're looking for when we run it, why we run it. Um, so I'm super excited to finally break down our run game. I wanted to get all of our air raid concepts out there and talk about it. Um, but now we're going to be breaking down our run game. So I'm super excited. Uh, the first play that we are going to break down today is buck sweep. It's been our bread and butter. We're super excited about it. So please, um, if you have been following uh, me on Twitter, been following me on YouTube, watching it, please subscribe. All right, I'm getting a lot more views and subscribers. Would love for you to subscribe. Um, comment down below anything that you want to know. Um, I'll also put down on what my Twitter is. So if you ever just want to DM me or you want to message me, uh, go ahead. I am trying to help out as many coaches as I possibly can. So here we are um, taking a look at our breakdown. All right, so we ran the ball 270 times, which is about 49% of what we had uh, this entire year. So, and then we had 141 explosive plays. Out of that, when we talk about the runs with 10 plus, we had 70 runs, all right, over 10 plus yards this year, which I, I take that as, uh, you know, a big time when we changed our entire offense, all right? So we had 2,000 rushing yards. We averaged 182 per game, averaged 7.4 yards per rush, and we had 24 touchdowns on the ground. So that was our breakdown. All right, so then when we go into our running game, all right, buck sweep, we ran it 80 times, all right, so it came out to about uh, seven times per game, all right, and we averaged nine yards per carry for 715 yards, 32 explosives, and 10 touchdowns. So somebody's probably like, why did you not run it more? So the one big one for us of why is people eventually, we kind of figure out, all right, buck sweep, you know you got to run it. Um, usually to a wing or a tight end. Well, we wanted to make sure that we weren't predictable. All right, so some people did get uh, get up on it, and they, they kind of figured it out um, a couple of times this year, so we had to get away from it. And then that's when we ran other plays a little bit more successfully. All right, but bug sweep is something that we feel very good about this year. Um, we're going to continue to run it. We can run a quarterback buck, buck sweep. We'll run jet buck sweep. So all those different variations we'll talk about. Um, so please stay tuned, and uh, we're going to get into our huddle, and we're going to show you how we install it against a three-man front, four-man front. Um, we'll talk about how we protect it a little bit um, and the different variations and maybe some drills to help uh, get, get you better at it and to make sure that buck sweep um, is a bread and butter for you. Um, and also just want to shout out all those coaches that – Run buck sweep that I've studied up on. This is this was the first time I ran buck sweep and power um, ever in the offenses that I've ran. So I was super excited about seeing the production we had. I'm still uh, still learning, still trying to figure out um, the ins and outs and how we can make different changes and variations. So um, it's not a polished product, but I don't think any of us are. We're always continuously trying to get better and grow. Um, but hey, let's get into our install of buck sweep. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw it up against a 4-3. So this is our buck sweep with the wing. All right, so what we'll usually get is they'll keep that defensive end kind of um, in a five-tech, you know, because our guy's going to be off the ball. Um, so he'll stay in a five-tech on this side, and then they'll have a linebacker either over top of our H or to the outside. So <clears throat> this is kind of the defensive front that we'll get. So kind of one of our rules is we try up front to get two to three foot splits. Depend on um, depend on the who we're facing, um, we will change our splits and all that good stuff. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about is what we do with our O line. So we tell our H back, who's our tight end, all right, anything head up or inside you've got. So right here, he would have this defensive end, all right. So he's trying to crush him. All right, and we tell him, done across your face, you're taking him to the opposite way of buck, all right, or you can drive him uh, drive him vertically, but there's no way that he should get to your outside. All right, then the next thing that we do, okay, is, you know, we would love to be a three-tech, but you never know when you get lined up. All right, and we're also talking about high schoolers. 
We would love to throw a run to three tech to have a good angle. So right here we have a five or I have a one. All right. We are going to have our tackle get him. All right. And so he's getting straight. He's getting flat and he's working his angle. All right. And the same thing we tell him, you know, when we talk about gap down back. All right. And we just talk about we do, cannot let him cross your face um, and you cannot let him penetrate. So he said he gets flat. All right. And we take him. Okay, so then talking about this play side, the front side guard, all right, his rule is anything to the outside, all right, whether we decide a stand up, all right, or anybody outside of our tight end, that's your guy, the first guy, and you are trying, and you're getting there with speed, all right, so we don't get a huge open up the hip and go, okay, he gets as wide, or gets as, you know, about a 45 degree all right, and then he's getting out there almost like a trap block, okay, and getting out there fast to try and set the edge. Now, like I said, um, we run a buck suit probably a little bit different, all right, but we tell these guys, take a look at who you have um, on your assignment before the snap, and you are going to be like a heat-seeking missile, making sure that that guy is taken care of. So we tell them that this linebacker comes creeping up and comes flying because he sees everybody stepping down. You've got him. It, whether you, you know, get him down, you drive him vertically, you drive him out. That will the running back will make you right. All right, because we don't want any pressure on him. Now, here we go. Center's blocking back. All right. So the same kind of footwork that we talked about with this tackle. All right. He needs to get flat, and he needs to make sure that this guy right there does not uh, get in, penetrate the offense or penetrate the line, and uh, cause a problem with our match with our quarterback. All right. So then. Our guard, okay, he's responsible for the play side linebacker wherever he's lined up. So he's going to have his eyes on him, all right? If he sees that this linebacker is trying to shoot through, then he's got to, when he gets his open uh, open pull block, all right, he's got to make sure that he doesn't. he's not a problem because here's why we don't worry about it. This backside defensive end for us, we don't worry about him. But our, So what our tackle does is he inside releases, and he has – this backside backer. All right, so he is doing that home run touchdown block. That's who he is responsible for, all right? And why else we don't worry about this defensive end? It's because of what we do with our RPO. This guy is running a hitch with an option of a glance if, they're, if this guy is flying out of there. So that's why we don't worry about it for our quarterback. All right, so this guard is responsible for him. But he is reading, all right, what happens in over here. All right, you'll see times that, that everybody collapses down and they're flowing here. All right, and this linebacker gets caught in the flow, so he's getting outside. All right, so that's what makes how we run it a little bit different is that he's responsible for him. He's trying to find him, all right, and whatever way he can keep this linebacker on the play side from making a play, we're fine with that. All right, and then... Oh, not, he's not blocking. Okay, he's got our fade. All right, and then this guy has a one receiver. He's got our glance. All right, so we, you, we block this corner pretty much with that glance because he's following him, and if he doesn't, all right, then we'll hit that. All right, so now the only guy that we got to worry about truly is that safety. All right, and that's kind of where our quarterback gets into. So this guy is who – this guy's getting red, all right, And our running back is his alignment. It, our quarterback is has his toes at five. All right, so the running back has his heels. All right, at five, and he's going across the quarterback's face. All right, and then he is following this guard. All right, if he sees that the flow is here and we can cut up, okay, then we're going to cut up. All right, and then this is once again where we change. Where we're probably a little bit different than the old school. If he can get outside and he trusts his speed and he sees that there's nobody out there, then we let him take it off, and we just seal the, the inside, and then he gets going off to the edge and off to the perimeter because we have two really good running backs. But you'll see, we'll get off to the edge, but we'll also cut it up. All right, the quarterback now, he can either read it by um, taking it and running, or he can let that running back cross his face, and if we like this little glance or this, like right here, if this safety does not come down on our stick route, we'll throw it. All right, so he has his options to either throw, all right, 
or he can pull it and run. All right, off out the back door. So that's how we run it um, against a four-man front. Like I said, it's probably unconditional. It's probably a little bit different than other people. All right, but uh, it worked for us. All right, and that, at the end of the day, that's the name of the game. It worked for us. We averaged almost eight yards per carry. All right, and so that's how we ran it against a four-man front. All right, now what could things could be different? All right, is that we would have against a with a hand in a dirt tight end. All right, and this is where we'll get into that against the four-man front. Okay, so what we'll see a lot is linebacker will apex, safety be over top, safety here, all right, and then they'll have a corner there. All right, so that's what we'll get a lot, and then they'll go with three tech, and then you get your one. All right, we love this look. All right, so how does that change for us? Okay, so now if, he's, if he is outside, that's the guy now that we are – going to let get unblocked all right until the guard so now we just follow our rules tight end he's got the linebacker okay gap down backer all right tackle he's down on the ta uh on the tackle guard is pulling trapping him getting him out of the picture center blocks back so this is the picture that we like okay and now he inside releases and he's trying to track to take away that backside backer so he's just sprinting right from the snap, all right? Because once again, our quarterback can pull. All right, and then what we do with our three by one out here, is we run bubble, all right? And then we're reading this defensive end. And the running back keeps his tracks, okay? So now this guard, is now everybody's got blocked. And this is the beauty of why we love Buck out of Trio. Okay. Is he's getting out and then he's responsible for outside and we can get him on a cornerback. All right. And we've had that a lot. All right. So once again, it might be a little bit different, but that's what we'll usually get is a linebacker out here. Okay. Um, the only other thing that, we, that people would do is they put a linebacker over here. So I'll show you what it looked like if that happens. What people would then also do is they'll go here, they'll lock him up, all right, and then they'll play a safety kind of in the box, and he's kind of apex and splitting that, all right, and so then this is how that would change, all right. We would still have him and go and get that linebacker, and then he's kicking out that defensive end, and what I love now is we're still feeling good because he gets that linebacker, and now our running back can either, sorry, can either cut up where we'll have everybody's blocked off, okay, or he's now one on one with that cornerback, all right, because this guard, sorry, I took it away, he's getting around, and he's got that linebacker, all right, and so then that's how they might change it up. So that's how we run it against any type of four man front. All right, so the next thing that we'll do is then we'll go and talk about what happens when we see a three-man front. All right, so now here we go against a three-man front. All right, so if we get our a normal 505 up front, all right, um, what we'll see, okay, is that they will hug an outside backer, all right, right outside of our H, okay, and then they'll have their other outside backer, will apex, all right, so we'll try and get him all the way out here, and if he does not expand, I'll be honest, this is how we get an easy RPO. We have a little five yard hitch, okay? We got our MOR, and then we have our glance. Okay, so that's what we do with that aspect. Now here's what we have, okay? We'll go from backside. He's screaming across, okay? And we have him taking the middle linebacker, all right? So we have him taking the linebacker reading this defensive end and him because we can quickly throw that out even if that safety comes flying. All right, center, okay, we ask a lot out of him. He's gonna base and we tell him, just do not let him get into the backfield. All right, whatever you can do, okay, just, you know, get chest to chest, keep him from penetrating um, and getting it in, uh, into the mesh of the quarterback and the running back. All right, so now this is where it's gonna get a little bit trickier, okay? 
So now we'll have our front side tackle, okay? He's going to be responsible for the play side middle linebacker. Our H now, okay, whether we put him hand on the dirt, okay, or as a wing, all right, he's got this defensive end. That's what our, our rules always are against a three-man front. Three, uh, three man front. All right, now, here we go. Front side guard is kicking out that outside backer. And if you take a look, everything now is is we have everything responsible, okay? So now we're getting an extra guy going, all right? And that's even with their six guys, all right? We have ours and everybody is accounted for because we're reading this defense in, so we get an extra hat, all right? So the running back is now following, and you'll see when our big creases is, is when we face a three-man front. Crease there, or once again, we'll get outside. And then, yes, they might have that safety try to fill, okay? But now that's where our running back, his eyes are on that guard to the perimeter, all right? And then, like I, we told you about our quarterback, he can now pull it and run or pull it and throw it up to our stick. All right. So that's how we go against the three man front. All right. Now, what could be different? All right. What we'll do, okay, is if they're playing uh, four eyes, okay. So if they're playing that the four eyes, we're going to go with our tight end on the line of scrimmage. All right. And here's why, okay? So, if they're playing the four eyes, they're gonna bring this backer here, all right? We're gonna try and get him out wider, try to get him apex. They're gonna bring a safety over here, and safety's gonna be lined up with our H, all right? So let's talk about what we have, okay? He's by himself, boom. Got a stick, there. So. That takes away the corner, takes away the corner. This should vacate either a backer or the safety, all right? And now this safety, if he's not paying attention, we have that. So that's what should vacate that in our quarterback. We make him responsible for that, all right? Our running back, once again, he knows, he'll knows he know his path. But if we're getting four eyes, all right, here's what we love. We are going to actually outside release, all right? and take a look at this backer. If this backer comes flying, he has them. Otherwise, he's outside releasing, and now he is getting to the easiest way to this backside backer, all right? Our tight end now, okay? That's four eyes. We have him going to play, going to the play side middle linebacker. Our defensive end is crushing down. Center has him, all right? So now, once again, we're reading the defensive end. That's fine, because now take a look. Our guard, boom, takes care of him. And now he's getting his path off of the H's butt. All right, and now we have numbers once again. All right, and then what is our quarterback doing? He's reading that defensive end. So he gets out, and if they're coming through, okay, we can just pull it and run. All right. And then our, once again, what is our running back doing? He's following that backside guard with his eyes on the perimeter, all right? So that's what we do with our three-man front, okay? So now I also want to show you a couple of different um, variations that we'll do, uh, but we'll do that in the film. I'm not gonna, not gonna draw it up, all right? I'm not scared of showing off our secrets, but I'd rather just kind of show our film and you can see kind of what we do, um, but I'm not gonna give in to all the different things, but we'll also do a lot of window dressing when it comes to our buck sweep. Um, we love to use our jet motion uh, to set it up. We like to do buck sweep bash. We like to do uh, jet buck sweep, all right? And if you want any information on those, like I said, I will make sure that my uh, Twitter handle is available. You can uh, comment down below on under this video and I will try and hit you up and try and we can talk some buck sweep. All right, so now that that is done with our three-man, our four-man front, all right, we're going to go into some film. All right, so here we are into our film. All right, so the first one we have is we have trio left, buck sweep right. So what that means for us, all right, is that our tight end has its trips nub, so our tight end has hand in the dirt, okay? And so what you'll see here is they're playing man. There's nobody high, 
okay? And so they got three over three over there, all right? And we are having a very tight, as you can tell, a tight, tight D-line splits, all right? And then we have two backers, all right? So for us, that played into our hand very well, all right? Because what we'll do, all right, is we have boom, okay? Center takes him. Now our guard comes out. We'll see it, we'll sit and see if he's doing anything to the backer. All right. And we should be off to the races. All right. So let's take a look at this full speed. Guys aren't ready because we're tempoing them. And you see, we let that in go. If anybody crosses our tackle's face, he gets there. And you see the angles. Tight end sees that he goes out. All right, so we actually have him. He shouldn't have done that, okay, because he should have gotten up to this guy right there because that should have been our play side guard. But once again, we got teenagers. They reacted. And we ended up still having a big-time play, but he did not do his job. Okay, so now the play side guard sees that. All right, and so now look at that, though. And now we have two guys out there moving. All right, so now we have two guys, and so now he can either get out or, like we teach him, Follow the butt of his backside guard. That's what he does, and he cuts up, and we get a nice game. All right. So now here we are. Okay, like I said, three-man front, we love it. Three-man hand in the dirt, we love it. All right, so this one, a little bit wider. Um, can't really see that great up front. Okay, but we are running buck sweep to the left. There's our tight end um, as a wing. All right, so they have a guy outside of them. All right, and they have the other outside backer here. Okay, so they have uh, seven guys in the box. So our quarterback was told to make sure that he was reading. All right, and so here's what we got. See our guards take care of business. All right, we have, they have two guys in the same area. So our center was able to take on two. All right, and our guards take care of this backer, and then our other guard following through, and we cut it up. Cut up off that guard, because this is the best part. Look at our tight end here. Our tight end does a great job, all right, of gap down backer, okay, because he the tackle took care of him. So he came in and got to that backer, and there's the crease. Cut off your guard's butt. Okay, nice play for us. All right, now here we go. Okay, against a four-man front. All right, we're running buck to our tight end. All right, he's going to be taking care of this defensive end. because, And then they have nobody out there, so we're actually running to our two wide receivers. All right, so now they have – they're playing high, the three high. All right, and so now we have a nice, easy six guys in a box. We have six guys to block. And now a running back should be good to go. And there it is. Defense, uh, our H back takes care of the defensive end. Tackle takes care of the nose. First guard gets going. There's nobody there. So he wraps around. The second guard gets going. Nobody's there. All right, because no linebackers are not. They, I don't, they were reading. I don't know what they are reading. But we had two guys pulling. They ran into each other. And now this is what I love. This is – he could have easily have gone outside, but he is one of those uh, running backs that we love. Uh, Trip, he's coming back. Um, so we got two running backs coming back. But he follows the, that guard's butt and cuts it up. And we have a nice game. All right. So here we go. Okay, now we're into trio. And what we do is we stack. Um, as you can see what people do with the stack. Okay, is they're going to put three over there. All right, so we got three guys out of the picture, four. So that means that most in the picture is they got seven, including a cornerback. So we kind of call that a six and a half. All right, so we like these numbers. Um, takes care. Of, he'll take care of him. He'll go down. Guard will get to be on a backer or a corner. All right, that means that we should be able to win this. And there it is, our tight end. Could have done a better job. All right. He actually, this play could have been bad. All right. But good thing by our 
backside guard of he is told anytime that he sees the other color, okay, the other team, you make sure you take care of them, all right? This should have been a nice, easy block, all right, by our tight end. He kind of blows it a little bit, but he does get up to the next level and takes care of that linebacker, and then our guards take care of the business, and we score a touchdown, all right? So now, all right, now we'll get into um, some variations that we have off of Buck Sweep. So here's our quarterback Buck Sweep, all right? So here we are in our trio stat, okay? Why do we do that? We have three. They actually have two on three here, okay? So we actually had numbers because he's all the way back there. But you can tell it takes three. So what does that mean? That there's eight, okay? Well, now that corner has come all the way in here, all right? So now... You know, we'll call that, you know, seven and a half. All right. You have three down linemen and a stand up end. All right. Linebackers playing outside. So we actually don't even have to worry about him because we're running buck to the right. So this is great because they're worried about seeing the running back on this side. They're thinking that we're running this way. So now you have this linebacker just doing nothing. This safety up high. All right. So we have one, two, three, four. I would say that we probably have five guys we got to worry about when we have six blockers. All right, so we will flash fake, get the linebackers going to the left, and now if you take a look, they all float here and now take care of him, and now we have an extra guy, and he cuts up, and there's our quarterback. Our tight end does an amazing job. Him and the tackle communicated. He tackle could take, uh, took care of the defensive end. Uh, Gus takes care of this linebacker, and our quarterback reads and cuts up. Now, our guard could have been a little bit more aggressive and should have, let's get to it, should have taken care of him, and it probably could have been off to the races. Okay, but he's playing both ways. And as a matter of fact, we had just gotten a turnover, um, and then we were going tempo, and that, so he was probably a little bit tired, but we need to do a better job of getting that because it could have been a, another touchdown. All right. Now, same team, same game plan. You saw how bad, how much they flowed, okay, with that little bash look. So now here we are. We're kind of spread out. All right, we're into our wing set. Okay, I would like to see him out a little bit more, but let's take a look. He's out of the picture. He's out of the picture. These two are out of the picture. That's four. So at most that they can have is seven. We have five old linemen, a quarterback, running back, and a tight end. So we have eight guys on seven in the box. All right, those are great numbers for us because if they all flow, okay, but we're, you know, we're take we're going quarterback, all right, so we don't even worry about them flowing away behind us. So we're running buck sweep right. We're not even worried about anything that's going on the left side of the, uh, of the field, all right? So here we are, flash fake. We get them stepping one set, you know, just a little bit, okay, a little bit. They can't be as aggressive. They're also worried about our pass. So look at this. You have one, two, three, four, five, six guys not even in the picture. And now you have a tight end. Tackle or tackle takes care of this defense end. You have a tight end and double guards coming for these three guys. And look at how we get it. Boom. And then he cuts up. And we just utilize our athlete. All right. Now, we talked about window dressing, okay? So now here we are. We have our tight end here in the dirt, all right? Um, we're going into the field. We're Ashton, uh, which I'm about to show you a couple of times. We'll run a jet with him, okay? So here's what we have. So we fake the jet, okay? And now, because we're faking the jet, we have our running back as a lead blocker. So now you have the job is running back is on this outside guy that's not in the box. Okay, so he's responsible for him. Okay, now you got guard responsible for that first guy, and then you'll see the backside guard get through. So here we are pulling. And there we go. Double guard pull. 
And then you have to touch anybody and we let our guy do his thing because of the fake jet. Fake jet takes them into the box. We're trying to get off the edge and there's a crease right through the middle. All right, now here we go. Last two clips that will run. Um, we have a nice little shifty wide receiver. All right, so we want to utilize his speed and get out to the perimeter. All right, so what we have here, okay, is our jet buck sweep. Nothing changes except for now you have a running back. His ultimate responsibility is the first person he sees outside of the box. All right, so what they're seeing is a spread set. So as you can tell, we have three D linemen. This guy, we don't have to worry about him. Don't have to worry about him. Don't have to worry about him. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's five guys. So that means at most six. And now we have a tight end and a running back with five linemen. We have seven guys blocking. So nothing changes with our blocking up front. All right. Now the running back gets off to the edge. And that's the first guy he sees. So he takes him. And now the receiver, when he gets it, he can read. If that guy would have funneled in, he would have bounced outside. So he's reading actually the running back's kind of butt, what he's doing. Just like here, he came up field, running back took him out, so he cut up underneath our guards. And now you have two guards pulling. And we get in for a touchdown. All right. And now here we are when we window dress things. All right. So now here we are in an empty. What is everybody thinking out of empty that we're going to pass? Okay, so we have three receivers on one side. One, two, three. So now at most, we have eight guys. I don't consider him in the box. So that means that that's seven guys. All right. Well, we have five linemen, our tight end, and we have our another wing. So we have seven guys blocking their possible uh, seven. But we take him out of the box. All right, so seven out of seven. And then we also have a quarterback. So they got to worry about the quarterback. All right, now we, our guy goes in motion. They're probably, because we use a lot of um, a lot of window dressing, they're probably taking a look at the quarterback, possibly going the other way. They motion this guy with him. We take care of the edge because this guy is the same thing as if he was in our trip's nub. He's responsible for the first guy outside. So that's what he's responsible for. We're, and then everybody else taking care of their normal job. And there it is. Okay, we could have done a better block on this right here. You know, we didn't do a good job sealing that. Safety takes a bad angle. He tries to come off to the perimeter, tries to get into the alley. She tries to fit the alley. And so our receiver reads that, and he gets outside. And the penalty was on them afterwards, and there it is. All right. So that is what I have for us for Buck Sweet. All right, um, there was our film. All right, there was our install. That's everything that we do with our Buck Sweep. Like I said, some people might do it differently. Why I don't call it pin and pull is that it's our guards pulling. We don't pull our tackle. All right, um, I know it's a little bit different than probably the wing tee, but it's what works for our guys, and we have both guards pulling. All right, we use our tight end. We use him as an H. Um, as a wing, we do everything that we can trying to run to him. We do have answers off of that. You know, we'll do window dressing with fake jet. Uh, we'll use the bash concept. We'll use our RPOs. We do a lot to protect our buck sweep because as you can tell, all right, this was just, um, you know, 10 of the 32 explosive plays. All right. And then we averaged eight. All right. We only had one run on buck sweep. Uh, that was actually zero or negative. All right, and then we only had one penalty off of it. So we only had two bad plays off of it. I wanted to show you some of um, the same, the most explosive ones. We had a couple of longer ones, but the film you couldn't really see very well. But that's our first run play in the power raid. Super excited about it. Like I said, trying to get even better um, at Buck Sweep. Only been running it for a year. Uh, Going to continue to get better. Um, guys love it. It was when they heard that Buck Sweep was called on the wristband. You know, the chin straps got tighter. They got their track, sh their track shoes on. And it was just one of those momentum plays that they love to run over and over and over again. All right. Well, 
Thank you for watching all the videos so far. Please subscribe. Please share with people. Um, now we're getting to the run game of the power raid. And our first one that we talked about was Buck Sweep to recap. Um, we got to see the film. Got to see our install against a three-man, four-man front. So if anybody needs to see it, um, hit me up. My Twitter handle, all right, is Coach M. M. Johnson. Uh, just message me. I'm willing to always talk ball, always willing to help out. I'll send you anything I possibly can. Um, until then, everybody enjoy getting better. This is clinic season, and uh, wait until the next video.